All right. So I want to actually write the same program, same component in React and Swift, just to see uh, how easy or difficult it is and uh, what the programmer ergonomics feels like, as well as the uh, how easy the, uh, the code is to understand and whether there are any limitations, etc. So let's get started. Let's create a React project. So here we go. Uh, npx, oops, npx, uh, create React app, and we'll call it uh, uh, file upload React. That's the component I'm going to create. Okay, happy hacking, good. Let's go and open it. There it is, file upload React. Let's open that. And I'm going to create, let's create a file upload uh, component. But before we do that, let's just uh, run the basics. So we go in here and run an npm install uh, or yarn install, I think that uh, goes faster. Okay, it's already done, good. Then we run this. So I could run it with npm run dev. Uh, or npm start or something like that, or I could just use this part. So here's npm start. That's gonna run it for us. So that way it doesn't take up one of my bash terminals. So here it is, edit src slash app.js and save to reload. We will do that when the time comes, but let's uh, instead, in, so let's go to app.js. And this, this is where we will embed our new component, but let's create our component in a separate file new file, let's call it file upload.js. Import react from react, oops, sorry, lowercase r. And we'll create a functional component, so which means export default function, file upload, there it is, and return. We will do something very simple. We'll just say, let's re, uh, return a an input type equal to file, right? So this is just going to create a simple file upload uh, uh, widget. Go back into app.js. And we can get rid of everything that is, um, or we can keep it, doesn't matter. My interest is more in the file upload component. So let's import file upload from file upload. And let's plug that component file upload into our application. So let me do something better. Let me just move this file upload inside the header because that is what threw us off. All right, so here you have some, choose files, select some files. Um, okay, uh, the thing that this component is going to do is it's going to let you select some files. So here I can select some files, but I can select only one. So how about we allow multiple? So we go go back here and say uh, multiple. If I just say multiple, it will let me select multiple files. There you go. So it can uh, it can select multiple files. But uh, and now it says five files selected. But multiple is a it should be a parameter. It should come as a property. So let's just do that here. Multiple. So. Uh, I hope you already know that I could have said, instead of putting multiple there, I could have said props and then be structured. I could say const multiple equal to props dot multiple. This is one way to do it. Another way to do it would be to destructure it straight into, into multiple like that. Uh, but even faster way to do that would be simply to go in here in the, within the function parameter list just destructure it right there. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do. So now uh, you can, I, I believe you can also provide uh, defaults, I think, we'll see. I think you can do that. So multiple, let's say by default, true. So once you do that, uh, you can choose files and now you can 
select multiple. Now back, come back here and you can, to make sure that it is controllable through multiple, I say multiple um, equal to false. Now there are many ways to say false. I will, I like this way because this preserves the uh, data type of, of multiple, which is Boolean, not string. So now I do, when I do that, I should be able to select only one. And I, oh, I am able to select multiple, that's not good. That is not good, why is that? Uh, yes, absolutely. So the problem is that I should be saying multiple equal to multiple, like that. Let's save that. And now, if I select, okay, now I'm trying to select multiple and it's not letting me select. I'm using shift and command. None of that is working, so good. So that is nice. Now let's go back and I, I, I still do want to do multiple true because there's a reason why. I am going to show the files that have been selected. Let's list every file that, that we are selecting. So um, let's do a UL and uh, we want to create, generate LI for each file that we have selected. So here is a curly brace. Um, the files themselves are coming from this component. So what we have to do is we have to create a state store, local state store. Uh, so we will say import react comma use state from react. So use state, if you don't know, is a, a hook, react hook that allows you to create local component, local state. So we will say const files and then set files. So set files is a setter, files is the getter, I guess. And we say use state and the initial value, which is blank, nothing, none, right? So now, whenever you select some files, which means there will be an on change event, the so on change, you want to handle change. So here we go, function, handle change, takes an event, and event.target.files is what we, uh, uh, is what we want to convert. So we just say array. Uh, well, let's first just console log this. Console.log files. Let's console log these files. And uh, that's all we will do. We are not actually changing anything so far. Okay. Let's see if this works. Okay, there is some problem. Files is assigned. Okay, these are warnings. We can ignore them. Um, let's select, let's uh, view the console, the JavaScript console, choose files, and we will select a bunch of files. And when I do that, console log shows that those are the four, five, five, four files that I selected. All right, so um, now that I know what, what file looks like, you see it has last modified name, size, type, and all these things. So what we we want to do is we want to convert that into an array. By default, it is a file list, literally file list, not an array. To turn that into an array, we just say array dot two, I think two array, array dot from, yes, array dot from, and then you say e dot, it will take any iterable which is what file list is, it will take the e.target, which is the input file, and then files. And then you just assign that to files like this. But you're not supposed to do that. Remember, uh, React doesn't want you to directly modify state. So you have to instead call set files. That's the setter. All right. Uh, you do that, and now you can actually start using files in here. So you can just say files dot map, and then take each file and turn that into what? Well, let's turn that into li f dot name is, is the expression that we want to put. So now what this will do is this will take iterate over files, map each the array of files into an array of of uh, li's, uh, which are mapped using each file element f 
being converted to li wrapping f dot name right let's save this see what happens we go to choose files and let's select uh, two three files and okay we got some thing and but I, we also got an a warning so yes of course we know what that warning is but let's first understand what we just did we we selected three files those three files uh, th that triggered on change on change called handle change handle change is extracting the list of files using e dot target dot files and then array dot from is converting it from file list to a plain array which is what we are passing to set files and that modifies files and then we are rendering files through a map function All right now let's fix this problem the keep issue uh, so react always wants you to set the key correctly um, a unique key so which means every li repeated li should have a, a key what key should it have well uh, it's something unique so we will say f comma i i is the index so map function can either iterate with just the the element value f or element value comma index and we will use that index as the key let's see if that works all right the um, warning at this point is gone but we'll see if that comes back okay no warning all right so this thing is working great let's make it look a little bit nicer because ul is not much to look at Let's make it look a little nicer by saying table. Let's call this and turn this into a table. Uh, create a T head and a TR containing TH uh, name, um, size, and type. So this is the heading, and then we will create a T body. body has tr and this tr is what is going to repeat so uh, let's uh, bring this file dot map into here because that's map is the repeater and instead of li we will be using trs it we will keep the key and close the tr but within tr we are not going to have f dot name directly we'll have tds let's do the tds all right td f dot name oops i said tr again i meant to say td all right let's repeat this f dot name f dot size and f dot type type is the mime type let's format this a little bit make sure it looks good yeah this looks reasonable most importantly map is map doing the right thing yes it is seems to be save it let's see what let's test it um Select a few files, and boom, we have a table. Okay, so this is this part uh, looks very reasonable, and um, it's not too complicated. So this is what how you do stuff in React. Let's see, go back and create a an equivalent set Swelch project, and see how it looks. So the way you create, just like you have create React project in Swelch, you don't there's no such special program for it. You simply use Dagit. So NPX Dagit is basically um, a way to, it's a tool that will clone a repository, Git repository, and remove the repository part of it, and just keep the source code. So Dagit, uh, get it from Svelte. Okay, NPX Dagit, Svelte.js slash template. So this is the uh, template starter project, and I want to, copy that into my uh, this is my the name of my project uh, all right let's get running it already cloned it was that fast so let's open it in vs code i have a vs code set up right next to this here okay here file uploads well that's my project that i just cloned through digit now let's get started by uh, running npm npm install so this will, oops, no, 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 no. I want to do yarn install, remember? The yarn install. Okay. So yarn install is done. Good. 
let's look at we let's look at the project structure there is um, public which contains index.html this is where the uh, the app will get mounted and the code that mounts it is here and here's the app i'm not going to go through all, all the structure of the swelt app right, right now i just want to do comparative analysis of the two swelt versus react so let's uh, create this swelt component uh, new file file upload dot swelt so just like the other one you just say input type but you will notice there is no you're not importing react or swelt why? Because Svelte is a compiler. It's not a runtime. So input type file, and you will have multiple, just like the other one had, so multiple, and the value of which is whatever you supplied as multiple. So no T O. And in, to, to define the parameter, I have to add a script tag, and in the script tag, I have to say, export let multiple and the default value is true so that is there okay now let's uh, start with this and we go back into app.svelte and instantiate this component let's um yeah so here i will say oh in order for me to use file upload, I have to import it. So let's import it. Import file upload from file uh, dot slash file upload dot swelt. You do have to say dot swelt. Okay. Um, now we can say file upload. And let's leave it at default. Save it. And we need to run it okay yeah so i forgot to run this so let's go to go and run i can run it from bash shell or i can run it directly from here npm scripts and there it is um, i'm opening that so i just opened it good so that hello world this is the this is came, came from the template but this is the part that i added the so choose files i can choose a few files and it says four files of course i haven't added the code that shows the files and everything so let's add that code. I want you to notice, uh, you know, whether it has more code, it used more code or less. So I'm going to basically copy that, uh, this code. Okay, yeah, let's copy it and, and then paste it here, right? Why, why increase our troubles? So um, select some files, table, and then tr, blah, blah, blah. So th there is one thing in which Swelt is different. It's not going to use files.map. First of all, files is not being uh, uh, being linked. So I have to, instead of saying on change with capital C, you have to say on colon change. Uh, so this is Swelt way of doing things. And in the curly braces, you will do the same thing. Handle change is the function that it will call. So let's do handle change. So function, handle, change, takes an event and does something with the event. Uh, of course, e.target is the file input and .files is the, uh, is the list of files. So let's do the same thing, array.from, take that. But the funny thing is there is no use state, there is no set state, there's none of that. You simply say, let files, empty array. Of course, you want to initialize it with something and then just reassign it. That's all. No use state, no set state, no, no files separate from set files, and uh, none of those. But this is it. This is all you have to do. So let's see if this actually works. Uh, so I save it. I am okay. Let, I'm not sure if that worked, but um, okay. Some some error. What's the error? It says parse error. So looks like some table T head something. Oh yeah, of course I forgot to fix this. There's no files dot map. Instead you have to say pound sign each files as file. Okay. And uh, you can and probably should have keys. So file comma index I, and then the key is shown like this. 
So you can just use I. So the funny thing is you don't assign a key attribute to anything. You simply, your key goes into the each block. Okay. So, and now you will close the each block. And of course there's no map of any kind. You just simply instantiate your TR. You don't have to say key equal to I. You, you did that when you put I in parentheses here. Okay. And so, so this is, this is the uh, collection files. This is the element of that collection single file. This is the index zero, one, two, three, four. And then while these two are being borrowed, uh, derived from this, this third one is not being derived from these. It's actually receiving the value that you derived and supplying it to the each block. So it's in the opposite direction. Okay. So let's see if this works. Uh, save. Okay. As you can see, the table heading showed up right away. Uh, choose files. Let's select a few files. And uh, it almost worked. Something. Oh, oh sorry. I have uh, some extraneous. Uh, characters there yeah let's fix those and let's try it, test it again all right this works okay so so far we have a, an equivalent program uh, this a program or a component that that does the same exact thing in both this one is doing it in Re in uh, swell and here's the other one that is doing the same thing in react uh, comparatively looking they they look about the same, but I think there are very significant differences already. One is uh, you're playing with use state and then you have files and set files and use state. And of course you're importing it. And then um, you're calling set files. As opposed to here, you create a local variable and then you assign it a new value. I think this is much simpler. Uh, second thing was the each versus map. I think and that's a wash you can i mean they are both equally easy or equally difficult i don't see any much of a difference if anything maybe this is more idiomatic javascript and then this each block but uh, it's okay all right let's now go a little further what if you did not want to show this in this form uh, like select some files and so on and so forth what if you wanted to uh, give some other help in React, the way you, you can actually give child content. Let's give some child content to file upload. And we will make that the help. So here I am. And I'm going to say um, React wants you to select some files. So that's the child content, okay? Um, let's go back uh, to the file upload and we will simply put uh, the child content wherever you feel like it. I'm going to put it here. So in a, here you just say children. Sorry, this dot children. I believe that's correct. Let's find out. If that, I'm so sorry. I was thinking of stateful component. It's not this. It comes from props. So props dot children. So we could simply say children in props. So it's restructured out of props. So let's just do this. Yeah, that's what it's supposed to do. Okay. So there you go. We supplied something. Let's save this also. And I supplied React wants you to select some files. And it shows React wants you to select some files through the fact that this is the child content and we are telling it to render the child content. Okay, so this is good. Uh, how would you do that in, um, in here? You can, you can best just uh, do something very similar. Uh, you supply some child content, let's do that. And we say, Svelte wants you to select some files. Okay, and back here, you do, um, to render some um, 
the whatever child content was that was provided you basically instead of saying children you say use the tag called slot slot so this is the something special to specific to uh, swelt so because i supplied uh, swelt wants you to blah 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 use wherever i put the slot that's where it showed up so in fact at this point it kind of is uh, not useful to have select some files so we can delete that um and now it's gone so it wants to select some files but what if someone decided not to supply the child content right if you do that now you have no help neither the component providing it nor the caller of the component the parent providing it so how do you solve that problem you solve it simply by making the default uh, content child of slot so now earlier we had a paragraph we can still have a paragraph and say select some files when you do that select some files shows up but if you happen to provide child content which is what we had earlier like this then the child content coming from the parent is shown and uh, so slot is simply a fallback it, uh, slot slot provides this fallback uh, how do you do the same thing in react well it's actually not that difficult uh, you simply say um, if someone provided me with children then i will render them but if there are no children just render this content so if you do this at this point since uh, the the caller the parent application did provide content that's what you're seeing but if you delete this child content then the default children which is the first part of this expression shows up all right so far so good they're both equal and nothing um, different but what if you wanted to replace the entire table with ul whatever so which means you let's uh, change this let's go back to react wants you to but this time i'm going to wrap this in a paragraph tag uh why in a paragraph tab tag you will see that in a second and now i want to say hey show me some ul and in here there should be um let's see um in here there should be lis right and they should show the files that's my intent just like uh, that's how we started out right so how do we do that we have a problem here what can i put inside the li i mean i can obviously i'm going to do some map of files so i could say files dot map oops i could say map files dot map and then f maps to li f dot name but we don't have files there is no variable called files or anything bound so that is our, our concern so let's see if this anyway works so it says files is not defined of course that's not going to work uh, all right let's create a local variable i guess we will call const file equal to an empty array right so if i do that yeah so that works uh, and uh, i'm selecting that i see the table but i don't see the ul or anything like that and it's going to be hard to uh, show the uls because we, i don't have the list of files here let's go to slot uh, to swelt okay before we go to swelt let's just finish implementing there is a way it's not like it's impossible it's just hard so what we have to do is we have to pass in a callback and the callback is going to say um so here to uh, say uh, let's call it files callback something like that I, i don't know what to call it and we will give it a value of files call back same thing okay now we are create a function function files callback it is a function and it's being it's going to be called with the new value of files right and so someone is going to supply this and we are going to try to update this one 
So let's, uh, we have to have different names for it. So uh, let's call this FS just to distinguish. And this cannot be constant. This has to be variable. So let's make it let. And then we will say files equal to FS. Okay, so someone is going to set the value of files, hopefully, and then you are going to get uh, that value here. So obviously, file upload has to accept such a thing. So now we go back in here and then say files call back. It's being supplied at the prop, and now. Uh, we have to handle change will do this. Yes, yeah. so handle change will call files, call back with the new value of files, right? This seems reasonable, should work, at least to me it seems reasonable. We'll see, uh, choose files. It's selecting three files. No, nothing happened really. And I'll tell you why it didn't happen. Because even though you are reassigning a new value to files, React doesn't believe in you are reassigning values to uh, variables. It believes in set state. You have to call set state. So uh, what's your choice? You have to do again a use state one more time. Let's do use state. So React comma use state. And uh, we, we will change this whole thing to use const. Uh, can we? Do, yeah, we can do const. Const files and just same same as before, right? So files comma set files is equal to use state empty array the initial value. Now someone will call set files. Now we don't have to write our own files callback, delete it, and simply instead use set files. Okay, so hopefully this will work. Uh, and this files callback is going to be get called in handle change, and it's going to be supplied with files. So hopefully this whole thing works. We'll find out. Mm, did it do anything? It didn't do anything. Now that, I mean, I'm sure this can be made to work, but I just want to show you that it is obviously non-trivial, right? Now, how would Svelte do this? Here's what Svelte would do. It already has let files here, right? It can simply allow parent to borrow it. by saying All it has to do is export. Export let files. The minute you say export, it is ex exposed as the as a property to parent. Now the problem is that that property is two way. It needs to be. If I just say files equal to uh, some local value of files, then it is one way binding. It's going from uh, parent to child, not going from child to parent. I can say let files equal to an empty array, and now the Look, this local variable files uh, goes to the child as files, but I want it in the opposite direction. So the only thing I have to change is bind. Okay, now that it, it is that's done, let's uh, put the same UL and all that, right? So let's see if this works. Wrap this in a paragraph. Um, UL, sorry, what am I doing? UL and each block, like before we always do each block and LI, F, oh, each has to say files as F and I'm not going to bother with index and key, so F dot name. Save it. Let's see if this works. Mm. 
Oh, sorry. <laughs> I see a reason why. Because I, I have never not saved anything. I mean, even this is not saved. So let's save them both. That's why it was not working. So once I save them both, and uh, hopefully this will reload. Yeah, it reloaded. And now I select a few files. And boom. The so this is the content coming from parent. It so parent is able to customize it. Uh, parent is saying, yeah, uh, show this instead. But it's not showing instead. If you really wanted it to show instead, you just wrap the whole thing in slot from here to here. And now it will show. It won't show the uh, show the table at all. So files, select a bunch, and you see the ULLI, you don't see the table. So sl the job of slot is to provide default content in case parent doesn't want to provide one. And um, here's React. I don't even, I mean, I'm sure there is a way to make this uh, files and set files uh, in form of callback to work. I mean, you can always do all kinds of Redux and set uh, state to props and set, uh, set uh, dispatch to props. All kinds of things can be done and I'm sure it can be made to work. But as you can see, it's not easy. Okay, now I realized what uh, mistakes mistake I was making. The problem is, I am instead of uh, uh, using files, which is not even set yet. When you call set files, the value of files is not modified immediately. In any case, we are not supposed to use that. What we are supposed to do is, we are supposed to make another copy of this same uh, file list so array from so this is what I, I should have done files callback which is which is calling the parent set files and supplying it with a copy of files array so once you do that save it now everything should work let's go to choose files and select a bunch of files and at this point yes the ul li which is coming from parent here this is coming from parent uh, is being rendered while the file upload itself is providing a table uh, which is showing over here but the important thing is that in the parent now files uh, variable is getting updated correctly because of use state which is the callback files callback being set files being supplied in and then the file upload component during handle change calls your set files from parent which is file callback files callback is the alias with the array from e.target.files. Once you do that, it st all starts working. So uh, as you can see, I mean, it, it, it works, uh, but it is uh, very involved, somewhat complicated. You have to create two separate local states, one in parent, one in child, and you have to update both of them. Of course, there is a way to do this. You can create a shared store, but none of that is needed in Svelte. Uh, React will make you use Redux and set state to prop and set dispatch to props and uh, some shared uh, states and reducer and you have to connect the components and whatnot. Um, while in case of uh, Svelte, uh, all you have to do is expose your local variables as export let and th then you bind to them uh, in the parent. So that uh, is a quick comparison between the two. There are more things you can, uh, for example, in case of React, you can provide only one set of children. That's all you have. Your own, you have only one slot for children. Whatever you supply as child content ends up in the um, child as a children prop, right? Over, over here, right? But uh, in Svelte, you have multiple slots. You can create any number of slots. For example, if you think of this part as help and this part as file list, you can do that by just calling uh, this, uh, giving, giving it a different slot name. So here, let's do that. We call this slot name equal to help. And then close the slot. And then next slot, you can open. This is a separate slot name equal to say file list, okay? And now you have two slots. One is the table, the other is the paragraph, right? So back in here, 
you can if you don't um, obviously now this is this is unnamed slot and unless you instantiate unnamed slot somewhere like say here uh, unless you do this uh, the child content won't even show up at all so in so in order for us to make sense we have to call this uh, p slot equal to help and then this one you can say ul slot equal to file list and this is how they will uh, it will replace that content so if if we go back here Svelte wants you to select some files and this is what you supplied and which is replacing this help if you wanted in, i mean if you don't name it that if you just call it something that it doesn't expect help one then this part gets ignored and then select some files which is the default value of this slot shows up anyways so uh, the, there's another advantage for soil because it's giving you any number of slots you just have to name them while react gave you one chart which is children that's it okay so let me leave you with these closing thoughts uh, in react versus swell uh, react is a fr framework with a runtime uh, swell is a compiler not a framework you react uses virtual dom swell does not use virtual dom it uh, it makes direct minimal changes to the dom uh, reactively in response to change in state uh, use react uses use state hook for component local state but for swell for component local state you just use local variables in react you use uh, you pass callbacks to get data out of child component as we did in case of uh, the app and the file upload but in case as well you just use bind and then files equal to files uh, in curly braces for a two way binding between child component props and the parent uh, variables and then finally in terms of slots uh, react provides you a single ch children property while swell lets you use any number of slots so i think uh, there is there are some significant advantages uh, and we have not even gotten into performance yet so that is something that we might cover in a future video so with that i say goodbye